What's up developers and welcome back to a new video where we will dive into data fixtures in Symfony. Quick pause, do you want to support the channel and want me to continue on creating content? You can support the channel on Patreon right now where you get benefits such as a private Discord group where everyone is sharing their coding issues and other developers are helping them out. If you are interested to join, the link will be in the description down below. Up until this point, we created our database connection inside our .env file. We did set up our new database and we created two migrations and entities through Doctrine. When it comes to coding, you don't want to add all data yourself inside a database, but you rather want to use a tool that will create dummy data for you. In Symfony, this can be done through data fixtures. So let's get right into it. We first need to make sure that we pull in the Doctrine fixtures package through Composer, which allows you to create fixtures. Inside the CLI, let's perform Composer, Require, double dash dev, space, then we're going to add a doctrine command, forward slash doctrine dash fixtures dash bundle. Hit enter, and as you can see, it's pulling it in. Now it has been added in dev mode. So if we make our terminal a little bit smaller, navigate to the explorer and open our composer.json file, scroll down, right here we have the require section, but if we scroll down to the bottom, you will see that Doctrine, Doctrine Fixtures Bundle, has been pulled in with a version of 3.4 or higher. Now why do we add the double dash dev flag every single time? In most cases, you don't want to push this to your development environment, but you want to keep this package only to run tests. When you deploy your app, you can simply tell Composer to not download these libraries. The Composer package we just pulled in has also created a new command inside the CLI. So let's make the terminal a little bit bigger again. And let me zoom in. And here, let's perform the Symfony console command. We have pulled in a Doctrine package. So let's scroll up to the Doctrine section. And I need to zoom out. All right. And right here, you can see a new command called Doctrine Fixtures Load. As the description implies, it will load data fixtures to your database. Now let's see what happens if we run this command. Let's say symphony console doctrine colon fixtures colon load. Let's hit enter. All right, it's giving us a careful slash warning sign saying that the database movies will be purged. So do you want to continue? So let's write down yes and we will see what will happen. If we hit enter, all right, you'll see that our database has been purged and it has loaded a apps fixtures file. So let's see where this file is coming from. Let's open the data fixtures folder inside the source folder. At the top, you'll see a namespace that should make sense. Then there are two use statements right here. One is the fixture composer package we just built in. And the second one is the doctrine persistence object manager. Imagine that we're going to add dummy data inside our movie and actors table. That can be done with the persistence class, since we're going to persist data inside the desired table. Now it has a default class name of app fixtures, which is extending the fixture class. Technically, a data fixture is a PHP class with a few initialized objects. If you want to add data inside one table, I recommend you to just work in this specific file. But since we're going to add it inside two tables, I recommend you to create separate files. Now what we can do is duplicating this file, so let's select everything and copy it. Now let's create a new file inside our data fixtures folder called moviefixtures.php. Now let's paste what we just copied right here and let's change the class name to moviefixtures, which should be equal to the actual file name that we have. Now inside the class, you'll find one method, which is the load method. So whenever you are trying to load your fixture, well, the name says it actually, the load method will be called. So what we need to do is making sure that we add some piece of code inside the load method so we can load the data through the CLI. You'll see that we have some code inside our load method. Let's delete it and let's start over. The main goal right here is creating a new object from the desired entity and then using the setters to set new data. Creating a new object should be something that you're familiar with. So what we can do is to say dollar sign movie. So object movie is equal to the keyword new, followed with the entity class. So in our case, it will be movie, 
Now let's hit enter to pull in our movie class inside the use statement. And don't forget to add parentheses and close it off with a semicolon. Inside the movie entity, we got a couple setters and getters that we can use right here. Now what we can do is going on the line below and saying, well, we have our movie that should have all setters, like I just said, which we can access through the access operator. So let's say dash greater than, and we're going to start off with the set title since the set ID will be set automatically. Now let's give it a name of the dark night, close it off with a semicolon. This needs to be done for all objects. So the second one can be grabbed from the movie, set release here. Remember that this is an integer, so we don't need to add single quotes inside the parentheses. So let's say 2008. Then we have our movie description, set description which has a piece of text of, let's say, this is the description of the dark night. Finally, we have the image path. So let's say movie set image path. We're going to grab the image from Pixabay. So let's navigate to Brave and let's search for Batman. And let's actually scroll down to this picture. I will add the image inside the description to save you some time, but let's just right click on it. And let's copy the image address. Let's navigate back to Visual Studio Code. Let's add single quotes and paste it in here. With the object manager that is being passed inside the load manager as a parameter, we can make sure that we persist our movie object to the database. And that's pretty simple to do. What we can do is to go right below our last object and say, well, we have our manager access the persist method. The persist method accepts an argument and the argument that we want to pass in is the object of our movie. So dollar sign movie. All right, let's create one more movie. Let's duplicate this entire block and let's go on the line below and paste it there. Now we're not working with movie one anymore because we can't override it. So let's say movie two and let's change all object names and inside the persist method as well. Let's set the title to Avengers Endgame. The release year was in 2019. The description is, this is the description of, let's say, Avengers Endgame. Now let's navigate back to Brave and let's search for, let's say, Avengers. I hope that they have a picture. All right, let's scroll down and let's just copy, which one are we going to use? Let's say this one, I like this one. Let's copy the image address, navigate back to Visual Studio Code replace the set image path value. All right, there's one more step that we need to perform and that's making sure that we add our object manager and chain the flush method to it. So let's do that. Right below our movie two, let's call our manager object and let's chain the flush method to it. This makes sure that both queries can be performed at the same time. It's time to run our loader one more time. Let's save the file. Let me close off this message right there. Inside the CLI, let's hit the arrow up and let's run the command. Now it's asking us if we want to erase the previous content of the table. Now since our table is empty at the moment, let's just perform a yes. Let's hit enter. As you can see, it says that it has loaded the movie's fixture. So what we can do is to open our database client, refresh it, scroll down and open the movies table right here you will see that we have added two new movies inside our database through the fixtures. Now we're not completely done yet because we obviously need to have actors as well. So let's do that real quick. So let's go back to the Explorer and there is actually no need to create a new file. What we can do is renaming the app fixtures to actor fixtures. Now we obviously need to change the class. So let's rename app fixtures to actor fixtures. Now this should be very simple right now. Let's remove what we have inside the load method. Let's create a new object. So actor is equal to a new actor. Once again, let's pull in the class, add parentheses and close it off with a semicolon. Now our actor entity has an ID, which will be added by default and simply a name. So on the line below, let's say that our actor, let's change the set name method of a value of Christian Bale. Now don't forget to persist it. So let's say manager persist and what it needs to persist is the object actor. Now let's duplicate this block, let's say three more times. 
All right. We're going to add two actors per movie. For Batman, we don't have Christian Bale twice, but we have Heath Ledger. We need to change the actor object name to actor2. All right, and let's persist it as well. Then we have an actor for the Avengers, which will be Robert Downey Jr., of course, which will be actor number three. All right, and lastly, we have the man Chris Evans. Now this will be actor number four. Finally, we need to make sure that we flush our data again. So let's say manager flush, save it inside the CLI. Let's hit the arrow up and we need to load our fixtures one more time. Now let's write down yes. All right, it has loaded the movie fixture and the actor fixtures. So let's open our database client. Let's refresh it and let's open the actor table. Right here, you will see that we have added four new rows inside the table. This is fine, but there's actually one thing that's missing right here. Since we have created a pivot table called movie actor, but if we open it, you will see that it is empty. This is happening because we have not defined anywhere inside our code that the pivot table needs to be filled. So let's do that. Let's make sure that we add data inside our pivot table as well. In most cases, you want to create a new movie and then assign an actor to it. You don't want to have an actor and then assign a movie to it, right? Which does not make sense. So let's navigate back to our explorer and let's open our actor entity. If we scroll down to the add movie function, you'll see that it will check if the movie exists and then adds an actor to it. So let's navigate back to our actor fixtures because we're going to add a reference right here. Right below the flush method, we're going to access the current object, which can be done by saying dollar sign this, access operator, and we're going to access the add reference method. We need to pass in two parameters right here. The first one will be a string that will be the entry identifier. So let's say actor underscore one. Then we need to add the object that we want to add a reference to. So right after it, let's add a comma, space, which will be dollar sign actor. Now let's do the same thing three more times. So let's duplicate this line of code. Let's change the second one to actor two, actor three and actor four. And the same thing goes for the actor object. Second one is object two, third one is actor three and the fourth one is actor four. Next up, we need to open the movie fixtures one more time since we need to get the reference that we have set inside the actor fixtures. We basically need to tell our object which actor is related to what movie. So right below our set image path of our first movie, right above the persist, let's use our movie object. And what we're going to do is to access the add actor method that we have. Inside the add actor method, we're going to get the current object by saying this access operator get reference. Now in here, we need to get the reference that we're passing in inside the actor fixtures, which will be actor one. In single quotes, let's space it right here. Now we need to duplicate this line of code because we want to add two actors for one movie. So let's space it right here. Then the second one will have a reference of actor two, which is referring actor two object. And let me actually add a comment right here. Let's say add data to pivot table. Now let's actually add a space here. All right. Now we can simply duplicate this and go right above our persist method, paste it right there. Now, instead of saying object movie, let's say movie two, and we're not going to reference actor one and two again, but we're going to reference actor three and actor four. And we're finally done. Let's save it. And let's actually save the actor fixtures as well. Inside the CLI, let's hit the arrow up and let me make the terminal a little bit bigger. Let's run it. Let's overwrite it one more time. As you can see, it has loaded the actor fixtures and the movie fixtures. Let's navigate back to our database client. Let's refresh it. Let's open our actors table. It has been added because the ID has increased for the movies as well. Now let's open our movie underscore actor table. And as you can see, we have added four new rows right here with the ID of our movie and the ID of our actors. All right then, 
this was it for this episode where we dived into fixtures and we even added data inside our pivot table. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.